Burglary and Related Crimes, Lecture 16. Burglary. Burglary is defined under 459 of the Penal Code. I'll let you read this for just a second. Elements of burglary include entering into any building or other specified structure with the intent to commit a grand or petty theft or a felony. Crime classification is a felony. Now, the entry doesn't have to be a forcible entry. It could be authorized as entering in a store into a store open for business. Let's talk about this real quick. Normally somebody goes into a store and I already told you that's entering a structure with intent to commit a theft or any of the felonies. So let's define some of these things first. So a structure is something that has four walls, a roof, and a floor, and a door to get into. And that door is lockable, although it's not locked. So the difference is, is that if you have a garage and the garage door is open and somebody steals your lawnmower, that's burglary because the door just happened to be open. If you have a carport and they steal your lawnmower, that's not burglary because it doesn't fit the characteristics of what a legal structure would be because it's not, it doesn't have four walls, right? So that's one thing we've talked about. The other thing we need to talk about is this is a specific intent crime to commit a theft or any other felony. Entering a building to commit theft or any other felony. Okay, that's what it takes. You have to have the specific intent before you enter. So when we talk about a shoplift, a person is going to do a shoplift, and they go in and they steal something. How do you know whether to charge them with burglary or not? Well, one way would be that if, here's a good example. A person comes in to do a shoplift. They see a piece of clothing that they want. They grab it. They take it and they conceal it in another part of the store. Then they come, they leave the store and they come back an hour later with a big coat on. They come with the big coat on, they go straight to where they have concealed that property and then they put it inside a coat pocket or under the coat and try to walk out with it. You could show that they left, they got the coat, right, premeditation, and they came back with intent to steal. Another example would be where the person steals something, runs outside, there's a car waiting, they jump in the back and they take off. So there was a plan, and that plan shows premeditation, which shows that they had already had the criminal intent before they entered the building. Okay, now the body of a person doesn't have to physically enter a structure. There's a case where the person uses a lasso to rope cases of oil and pull them through a gate. Definitions of a building, again, that are written in here. It could be a house. It could be an open pit mine, you know, a mine where you go down and, and mine for silver or gold or diamonds, what have you. It could be in closed telephone booth or showcases that are, you know, in these malls, they have these big showcases in the middle of the mall that are used to um, display clothing or jewelry or whatever. And the person breaks into that showcase to steal something. Could be an inhabited camp camper, and it doesn't need to be locked. In other words, you're camping. You've got the electricity hooked up. You got it on its uh, on the uh, stands. You've got uh, the water hooked up. And inhabited means currently being used for dwelling, whether or not it's occupied at that time. Now vehicles. Vehicles are different. Vehicles have to be locked. And remember, this is going to be second degree burglary. Uh, they, they must be locked to constitute burglary. Taking property from an unlocked vehicle is only theft. So entering the locked trunk of an unlocked vehicle is burglary. So let's talk, break this down.
I park my car at a mall, and I know that I have a convertible. The top is down. The trunk is locked. On the floorboard, I have my CDs. I have about 10 CDs. They're worth maybe about 100 bucks. And when I go into the store, I come out. Lo and behold, somebody took my CDs. This would be a misdemeanor theft. This would not be burglary because the vehicle was unlocked because the top was down. Same situation, I leave the windows down. It's still only theft because the vehicle's not secure. If the windows are rolled up, the vehicle is locked, and the person jimmies a lock, pries a window, breaks a window, goes in and takes, even if it's something that's $5 worth of property, that's still burglary. It's still a theft under burglary versus just a straight petty theft. Normally, and we'll talk about this in the next lecture, but theft of property $400 or less in value is only a misdemeanor. Over $400, $400 and one cent is a felony. So when a victim comes to you and says, my new Michael Jordan shoes were stolen out of my car and I had the windows down, you have to tell them it's a petty theft. It's not an auto burglary. So the intent on theft, again, is specific intent to commit a grand theft, petty theft, or some other felony, and that must exist at the time of the, of the entry into the structure. <clears throat> if all of these elements are there, then the crime's complete upon entry. The intended theft or felony need not be completed. I'll give you another example. I have a rape series going on. I'm looking for a certain suspect, and the suspect um, uses the following um, tools to commit their crime. They're doing rapes. They're binding the victim with duct tape. They're using condoms. They're using latex gloves. And they have a big Rambo-style um, survival knife that they use to pry their way into an apartment and also to threaten the victim. So I get a call of a suspicious person, and it's in, in a old converted hotel which is now converted to condominiums. It's all inside. So once you walk into the lobby, you're into the structure. I go up to a suspect on the second floor that matches the description of the suspicious person, and I ask him for a name. He gives me a name, and I ask him where he's going. He says he's, gonna, he's visiting somebody. And I said, what's the apartment number? And he gives me apartment 429 or 423, something like this. Well, this is only a three-story building, which means that, the, that each floor... The first floor is usually 100s, the second floor is 200s, and the third floor is 300s. He's uh, going to the imaginary fourth floor, so I kind of know he's lying already. Well, that's strike one. Strike two is that he has bad luck because the name he gives me comes back with a $350 warrant out of San Francisco. And at this point, I tell him I'm going to arrest him on the warrant. And he tells me, oh, I lied, I gave you the wrong name. And so now I've got him for also 148 uh, PC for um, basically interfering with my investigation. He's got a small duffel bag with him, and I decide that because he's so hinky, uh, and this could be my rape suspect because he does resemble uh, the description that we've got, that I'm going to feel the bag, the outside of the bag, and when I feel it, I feel what feels like a knife inside. So I have a right to go in and get the knife out. So I, I, first of all, I arrest him. I open up the... the um, container, the duffel bag, and I find latex gloves, condom, duct tape, and the knife, and also a ski mask. And uh, so I end up arresting him for burglary. And, um, you know, he tried to protest saying, well, how, you can't arrest me for burglary. I didn't break in anywhere. I said, you didn't have to. You entered the structure with the intent to commit a rape. The definition of burglary is entering the structure to with intent to commit a grand theft, petty theft, or any other felony. Well, rape is the other felony. So there's an example of how you could charge burglary on a case like that. Research and review. I want you to look at some of these other sections that are related to burglary and be knowledgeable about them. Look them up, know them. PC 466, possession of burglary tools. It's a misdemeanor. PC 466.3, possession of the means to enter coin-operated machine a master key, in other words, 
That's a misdemeanor. 466.5 is possession of a master vehicle key. That's a misdemeanor. And PC 603 is unlawful forced entry and destruction of property. That's a misdemeanor. That's where someone usually would break into a house and tear up the inside of the house while the people are on vacation. They don't steal anything, though. 